One of my most requested videos is always about responsive design. So today your wish has come true. As usual, you have a link to a community file in the description if you wanna follow along and you also have a link to sign up to Figma or upgrade your account. Let's jump in. Now in the file, we have a few elements that we're going to bring into our responsive design. We're gonna try and have our design in three different breakpoints. We want a desktop size, a tablet, and then a mobile size. So to start off, let's set up these initial variables. I'm gonna go into local variables and then click on create variable and create my first number variable. I'm going to call it breakpoint. And I want my desktop size to be 1440. Now I'm going to call this one desktop. Little side note, I'm gonna be using variable modes, but if you're on a free account, you don't have those. So you can either use the link in the description to upgrade your account, or you can just create different variables for each one of these. And then later, instead of changing mode, you just change variable. I'll remind you of this as we go along. So I've created my first mode, which is desktop. Then if I click on this plus, I'm gonna create the new mode, which is going to be tablet. And for this one, I'm gonna set the width to 768. And then one more mode, mobile. And for this, I'm gonna use 390 because I feel like that's kind of a good average of widths of phone sizes. And if you're on a free account, as I said, just create three different variables, breakpoint desktop, breakpoint tablet, breakpoint mobile. So let's drop in a frame to just start us off on that. I'm gonna click on F and drop in a frame. And then where we're going to select our width, I will assign it to the breakpoint variable. So already, this is great for us. It's 1440, I'm gonna make the height a bit taller. And then we know that if we go into the apply variable mode button here, I can change it from desktop to tablet, which will make it 768, and I can change it to mobile. So that is the basics of everything we're going to do. Now that we've set up our modes and our breakpoints, we're gonna continue from here and we're going to set a layout grid. So we are going to create some variables that set what our column grid is going to be for desktop, tablet, and mobile and then it will just change responsibly, which will be the starting point that will kind of determine how everything else is gonna work out. So I'll go back into my local variables and then I'll create a new number variable and I'll call this one columns because this one is going to determine how many columns I'm gonna use for each one of my breakpoints. So for desktop, the kind of best number to use, I think is 12. Then for tablet, I'm going to use eight. And then for mobile, I'm going to use four. Now, because I'm using just number variables again, I can click on shift and enter to just create a new one. And for this one, I'm going to set the margin now. The margin is the space between the end columns and the side of your frame. So almost like the padding, if we're talking in auto layout terms. So the margin for desktop is going to be 96, then 24 for tablet and for mobile, it's going to be 16. Next, I'll set the gutter. So the gutter is the spacing in between the columns. It's almost like a gap or spacing, if you will, for auto layout world. So in desktop, that's going to be 32. Then I'm gonna use 24 and 16 again. Yeah, that feels right. So now let's set up our layout grid. I'll select the frame that I've been using and bring it back to desktop mode. And then I'll add a grid. Now, if you are using the new UI that has moved kind of further down in the hierarchy, it used to be a lot higher above, but now it's here layout grid. Instead of grid, I will go with a column and then I'll go into my options and just set that up. So my count is going to be columns. Then type, keep that on stretch. My margin will be my margin and my gutter will be my gutter. Now, I really don't like this red color. It really bothers me. So I'm gonna change the color to something a bit more my style, but you can keep it at red if you want. So we can see our columns in action already. And now if I change from desktop to tablet, you'll see now I only have eight, like we set, and to mobile, I only have four. And it's adjusting it according to the mode that we are in. Now to understand a bit why grids are great in general, I'll just show you an example. I'm going to duplicate this frame over here, but for this one, I'm gonna remove the columns. If I drop in a square into here, so I'm gonna click on R to get a rectangle, and then I'll just drag it. You see, first of all, that it snaps to the grid lines. So I'll put that one here and I'll put this one here and I'll copy it and move it into this frame as well. Now, if I grab both of my frames and then resize them, you'll see that 
even straight away, we can see that something's really different between both of these rectangles, right? So the top rectangle is moving with me. It's not changing size, but it is moving. And then the bottom rectangle isn't moving at all. Now this does also have to do with constraints. So layout grids are great on their own, but with constraints, they become super powerful. So for example, I'll just make this one bigger so it touches both sides of the grid. If I change the constraint to left and right, for example, and I'll change it on here as well to left and right, you see that this rectangle that's in the frame that doesn't have a grid, we can see those guiding lines of the constraints touching the frame. But in this one, we don't, we don't see them at all. If I move them in a bit, you will see it because basically it's constraining itself to its nearest grid point rather than to the whole frame. So now let's see what happens when I select both of these frames and make it a bit smaller. Yeah. Okay, you see what's happening. So the top rectangle that lives in a kind of grid environment, it's just changing its size according to the grid. So if the grid shrinks, it shrinks kind of the same way it does. But the one at the bottom is just kind of going a bit rogue, to be honest. So yeah, that's just kind of a little intro to how grids work in general. So let's bring our first element into this page and see how it reacts when things change. So I'm going to take my title into here and I'll center it so it's at the center of the page. Now let's see what happens when I don't make any further changes. I select my frame and I go to the tablet. Okay, you see, it's not really doing anything and that's not very good for us. So that's not very responsive. So I'll bring this back to desktop and then let's see what we can do. So in order to change this and make this responsive, I'm probably gonna set a constraint that will help me. Let's try and see left and right. Left, right, what it does is it constrains you to the nearest kind of point that it can. In this case, it's constraining to this column and this column, and then it will forever keep the relationship that it has with those columns. So let's see what happens now when we go into tablet. Okay, we're getting somewhere, right? Let's try mobile. Lovely, yeah? So obviously it's not great, but it is doing something. Okay, so now that we came back to the original desktop, it's not looking how it looked before. So let's try and see, maybe left, right isn't actually what we need. So I'm gonna bring it to touch this column and touch this column. Make it auto width, yeah, let's make it auto width and then center it. Let's try and use scale instead of left and right. Let's see what happens now. So tablet and mobile. Okay, back to desktop. Yeah, I think I need scale. Yeah, that feels okay. So with responsive design, we're looking at different devices, which means we're probably gonna need to change more things than just the width and the columns and stuff like that. So for example, this is a bit of text right now. It's on font 90, but it's definitely not gonna need to be 90 when it's on a mobile phone. So let's create variables for that. I'll go into my variables and I'll create a number variable. I'll call it text slash display. Now you see when I made the slash, it created sort of a group for me. So now I have the subheader text. In desktop, it's gonna be 90. Then in tablet, maybe I want it to be something like 60 and then mobile 48. I'm kind of making this up as I go. So don't worry too much about the numbers, but let's see how that feels. I'll select my text box, go into my numbers and then select the font size is going to be display. Now, when we change to tablet, yes. Okay, so the text box itself shrunk because it's in a new column system. And now let's shrink it again, mobile, lovely. Yeah, so already that's feeling so much better. So it's adapting to the size that it's in, but it's also adapting the font size because of those different modes. Wonderful, I'm gonna bring this back to desktop. Great. That was pretty simple, yeah, but we can see how when we do responsive design, we do need to constantly test and tweak and see what is working for us and what isn't really working the way we want it to. Let's move on to our cards. So I've put my cards in here. They're set to left and center just because that's how they are kind of initially. Let's see without doing anything what happens when I go to tablet. Okay, they didn't move. Okay, now let's set them to scale like we did with the title. So I'll select both of them and set them instead of left to scale. Select the frame and go tablet. Okay. Okay, so they shrunk a little bit and both the image shrunk a little and the text shrunk. Let's see what happens when we go to mobile. Yeah, okay, so it's adjusting, but it's definitely not adjusting the way we want. So we're gonna need to, to make a few tweaks. We're going to set some min and max widths on our auto layouts. So to start off, I didn't like that this image shrank so much. It wasn't, I kind of wasn't enjoying it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a minimum width for my images. I think I would never want them to be smaller than a square. And I can see that their height is 160. So I'll go into fill and add a min width 
and make that 160 as well. So now they have a minimum width that they can't go any smaller than. Let's see what happens now. Go to tablet. Okay. Go to mobile. Fine. Now, what I probably want to happen is once they reach that point, I probably want the text to go beneath them, right? So I'll go back to desktop and then instead of making it a horizontal layout, I'm going to make this a wrap auto layout. Now, what's really important to remember about wrap auto layout is that it's essentially a horizontal auto layout until it has no more space to be horizontal. So what that means is it's still horizontal, horizontal, horizontal until the point where that image reaches 160, you see that red line next to the image, it can't go anymore. And now if I go smaller, that text will eventually drop down because it doesn't have any more space. Yeah. So this is good for me. Yeah. Let's see what happens now when we've set that minimum. Let's go to tablet. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. I probably need to set a minimum for the text as well in order to get that to work properly, don't I? So let's bring that back, but let's check mobile first. Okay, so in mobile it did jump below, but still it, it kind of shrunk a bit too much for me. So let's go back to desktop and, and keep playing around. So let's just move this in and see at what point would we want it to drop down? Probably around this point-ish, what is it on? So right now it's at 179, mm, maybe a bit more. Yeah, probably around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a minimum width for these text boxes as well. And I'm gonna set it at, let's say 165, okay? So that means that when they reach 165, let's do that just to see, when it's, once it reaches 165, it will just jump to the bottom. Yeah, that feels really good. So now we're on desktop, let's move to tablet. <gasps> Wonderful. And then let's move to mobile. Okay. So with mobile, we now have an issue, right? Because what's happening is this has a minimum, this has a minimum, but the card itself doesn't have a minimum. So it's saying, I can't, I'll just keep going smaller, right? It doesn't really care that the rest isn't going with it. So now let's set a minimum for the cards. Now I know that in my mobile screen, my width is 390 and I need to have a margin of 16 on each side. So let's use that to our advantage, right? I'm going to set a minimum width and I'm gonna set 390 minus 16 minus 16 and that's gonna be it. Now that I've set the minimum width, I can't have it be scale anymore. So you see when I go into constraints, I don't have scale. And I also don't have left and right. I can't exactly explain why, but, but Figma is really good at blocking things that don't make sense. So if something is contradicting something else, it kind of just won't allow you to use those options. So I need to find a different way around this now. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these two into an auto layout. So I'll select both of them, put them in an auto layout, shift A, and I'll use all of those variables again. So my horizontal padding is going to be my margin. My width is going to be my breakpoint. And I'm also gonna make sure that it's set to a wrap auto layout. I'll center this, I'll select the cards inside, and I'll set them to fill container. So they're taking up as much space as they can while maintaining the rules. So 96 padding on the sides and 32 in between them. And then I'll make sure to set the auto layout that they're in to scale because we know that that's what we need. Selecting the frame between desktop to tablet. Okay. And then mobile is going to stack them underneath each other because it knows that 358 is kind of the smallest it could go. Now there's just one more thing that I want us to do. Just like we did with our title, we also need to change the text size for the cards themselves when we're using different breakpoints. So we go into our local variables, inside of the text group, I'm going to add shift and enter to add a new number variable. And I'm gonna call this one title. And in desktop, it's probably going to be 28. Then in tablet, maybe 24, then here maybe maybe 22. Yeah, and then also let's make a body. So I'll just duplicate this one and then body. In desktop, probably 18, then 16, maybe 16 on mobile as well. Yeah, that's good. So now let's assign it. I'll select my body text in both and then in the drop down, just go all the way down to the variable and select body. Then the same for the title. Go all the way down and select title. Great, now let's see it in action again. Go to tablet, lovely. So you see that the text shrunk a little bit and then let's go to mobile, perfect. 
So with both of these examples, we've seen that it's never clear cut with responsive design. You're never going to be able to just drop something in and it will just automatically work. You always have to play around with it a bit, adjust it a little, maybe put it in an auto layout, maybe put it in a bigger auto layout, whatever it is. There's always some trial and error involved and it's not a super quick process. But the more you do this, the more you get used to it, A, you'll just be a better designer and produce better products, but also you'll get used to it and it will be a lot quicker. So let's try and do this on one more element. I want to bring in this sign up to our newsletter into our screen. I've already connected all of the text sections to our newsletter, to our variables. So let's say it goes somewhere about here. Yeah, that feels about right. It's, it's not the most beautiful design in the world, but it works. So let's set our text because we already know what this one needs to be. It's going to need to be scale. Happy with that. And then this form, I'm going to try and set it to scale and let's see what happens. Okay, all of the elements inside of it are set to fill, so they should dynamically move. Let's see what happens when we go. I'm just going to make this a little bit longer. Let's see what happens when we go to tablet. Okay, it kind of shrunk. Let's make it go to mobile. Ooh, it shrunk a bit too much. So let's set some of those principles that we said before. I think first thing is we know for 100% that this one can never be smaller than 358, right? We know that on mobile, that is kind of our maximum width and we're probably gonna want that to take up that maximum width. So admin width and it's kind of 390 minus 16 and 16, which are the margins, that is our minimum. But now because we set up that minimum width, obviously we don't have scale anymore. So at this point, what I think we should do is we should probably put all of our elements into an auto layout, right? Because we've also seen that they're clashing together and we want something to make sure that they're always spaced out properly. I'll put both of these, the title and the form into an auto layout. And then, oh, hmm, I'm going to remove the margins from this auto layout. So that one is going to be zero. That's fine. And now I'll take my whole frame and add an auto layout to it. Yeah, so I'm going to shift an A or click on this use auto layout. Now a frame can have both a grid on it and an auto layout and it kind of it does kind of change some of the things because obviously inside of an auto layout you don't have constraints. So there are different ways around this but now we've changed everything into an auto layout. So the width of the auto layout is still our breakpoint. Our margins for everything is going to be that margin. That's why we changed it before. And then in terms of the spacing, do you know what? Let's use the gutter for this as well, I think. It already has it here just because of how everything was set up, but I think we need some bottom, kind of some vertical padding as well. So now let's see if things have broken or not. Let's change this between desktop and tablet. Okay, so our title's fine. These are fine. This is kind of fine as well. Let's see what happens when we go to mobile. Okay, so you see that this isn't actually changing size. Yeah, so let's bring it back to desktop. This form wasn't actually changing size. So what we need to do is we need to set it to probably fill container to make it dynamic to what's happening around it. But now that it's on fill container, it's taking up too much space. So, and I, and this is kind of the space I want to start off at. So I think we should add a max width. So our maximum width will be 600. And that is for this auto layout. It's not just for this specific element. It's for the auto layout itself. And it is set to fill. Lovely. So it's filling, but it's already reached the maximum amount it can fill. Let's see what happens when we go to tablet. Okay. So it's still on 600. It hasn't shrunk at all. Interesting. And then let's go to mobile. Great. So when we've got to mobile, we can really see this in action. I'm going to hide the grid for a second. Control G. You can see that now it's taking up the maximum spaces it can, just like these guys, 358 for the win. And it looks great, I think. So it's super, super responsive, right? Now, if I go back to tablet, and I go back to desktop, you can see that they just kind of switch automatically. So we've successfully created a really responsive environment. So this is the final result. I added a little bit of styling magic to it just to show you what it could look like. Obviously this is a very non-functional design, but now you've learned some tricks and you can go and use them on your own designs. And that is that, a little intro on how you can use layout grids, variables, and auto layouts to make really responsive designs 
as I've said a million times in this video, it's all about trial and error. So go out and test it out and just learn by doing. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you at the next one. Yeah. <laughs>